Um, yeah, I don't believe that acting on um, homosexuality um, is a sin at all. Bro, there's ijma. Anybody that says the act of homosexuality is not a sin is a kafir. This app has been such a game changer to me. I've never been so consistent with my Quran reading before I knew about Quranly. And you can get Quranly absolutely free, no credit cards, for seven day free trial. What are you waiting for? Download it now, brothers and sisters, and build a habit with the Quranly app right now. Assalamu alaikum, guys, and welcome to another episode of uh, Ali Dawa smiling to Jannah, inshallah. Come on, guys, don't forget to unsubscribe and uh, dislike the video. That's right, you know, everyone keeps saying that. I'm going to say unsubscribe, don't comment, and dislike. How about that? Yeah, let's start the video again. Let's do it. Let's watch it, inshallah. So this is a video that I watched and I was nearly pulling my hair out uh, due to uh, one of the individuals there. A good Muslim woman wears a hijab. I think that one of the main reasons why I disagreed is because of the statement, a good Muslim woman. And I think that you can be a bad Muslim woman as well and wear the hijab. And then also the hijab is not just limited to the headscarf. It's how you dress and how you carry yourself as well. Where do you see in the Quran that it requires hijab? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقُولِ الْمُؤْمِنَاتِ يَغْضُدْنَ مِنْ أَبْصَارِهِنَّ وَيَحْفَظْنَ فُرُوجَهُنَّ وَلَا يُبْدِينَ زِيَتَهُنَّ إِلَّا مَا ظَهْرَ مِنْهَا وَلْيَضْرِبْنَ بِخُمُورِهِنَّ عَلَى جُيُوبِهِنَّ So the, here the word khimar, it doesn't use the exact word hijab, but the word khimar means headscarf. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I guess for me in how I read the Quran, yeah. the translation that I have, the word isn't required, it should that women should cover their heads and cover their chests. And so that's, that's why I hesitate with saying that it's, it's an obligation um, because it's more of a, I would say, should isn't must. So the first thing to understand is we don't take our laws only from the Quran. Yeah, we have a hierarchy. You've got the Quran, you've got the Sunnah, then you've got Ijma'ah and you've got Qiyas. So there's a four-pronged approach. So to solely say that, oh, the Quran doesn't mention this is not good enough. You have to then refer to the Sunnah, then Ijma'ah, mm. Qiyas. Islam is not just based upon the Quran, so that's a fundamental mistake that um, that view uh, doesn't take into consideration. Yeah, and she was like, oh, where does it say that? And he brings evidence and he goes, okay. Well, that's good, she's, she's taken it, but then... No, her... no, no, but why would she... No, it's as if she had something and it just backfired, like, okay, he knew what he was talking about, which the brother did know what he was talking about. And she was like, oh, okay, all right, let's speak. It, it could just be her tone and the benefit of the doubt that she mm. just wants him to kind of uh, give the proof. Yeah. But then I think the but issue why was... Would you, why would you do that? It might be for the purpose of the video, knowing it's a non-Muslim audience, kind of... Oh, okay, all right, all right, no problem. I just took the prompt to literally, I mean, I consider myself a good Muslim, alhamdulillah, but um, I don't wear the hijab, obviously. Even if the Quran doesn't specifically say that this is required, the interpretation of the Quran has said that it is required and I do believe that. I know it seems kind of contradicting that I'm a conservative Muslim and I don't wear the hijab. I just, I don't think I'm ready to kind of wear the hijab yet. I want to wear the hijab, I need to wear the hijab. Well, I, you know, it's so profound, bro. She doesn't wear the hijab, yeah? And look at her mentality, bro. Mm. And then you've got someone on the other side, liberal, who got some sort of a hijab on, or the one with the niqab who believes she's liberal, yeah? Bro, it just shows you again, bro. Do not judge people from their outer garment. Wallahi, bro. She doesn't wear hijab and is abiding. Yep, that's what Allah says. Even though I'm not wearing it. Yeah, wallahi. She, I believe she's 100 times better than the one who's questioning, like, oh, is, is it? Does it? You know. <sighs> Acting on homosexuality is a sin. Um, I believe that acting on homosexuality is a sin if, especially like if you were expressing sexual desire because that should take place between a man and a woman under the sanction of marriage. So that is the reason why I do feel as though it is a sin. And it's uh, pretty clear in the Quran, Allah SWT says, Do you guys prefer men over women when he's talking to the people of Lut? And the Prophet, peace be upon him, وسلم, he says that one of the, the biggest problems for the ummah is the sin of loot or the people of loot again we could just all agree you know this is not our personal opinion or anything it doesn't in the end of the day when it comes to religion our personal opinion doesn't matter right it doesn't, it matter. doesn't matter this is what god ordained for us you know this is the the natural way oh, she's shaking her head if we start diving in and wanting whatever we want it just where, where does it end at that point when is it gonna is it gonna come to incest next for instance in america or in the west homosexuality 
30 years ago wasn't accepted. Or 40, 40 you preach, years, my brother. But now it's acceptable. This is the liberal idea, right? The subjective morality <laughs> just shifts. It shifts based on the time. We don't shift in, in our religion. Um, yeah, I don't believe that acting on um, homosexuality um, is a sin at all. Um, there's so much to get into. In the story of Prophet Lut itself, you see that, that they weren't condemned because they, the people of Prophet Lut were coming to, to his house to um, have sex with the men who were disguised as angels, but for you can look at it as a condemnation of, of rape and, and, and abuse itself and mistreatment of um, strangers. And the Quran verse that you um, cited as well, within that verse, um, Allah uses the prefix al, which is means the, and there's um, interpretations that exist that say that specifically is talking about those men specifically who leave those women specifically. So meaning that those men who did that had wives that they left to go rape these, or try to attempt to rape these um, guests in an attempt um, to um, bring humiliation upon the prophet and to, um, uh, to um, sorry, I'm getting a little emotional. No, it's not emotional. She's not, she's, not, she's not getting emotional. You can see from her tone voice, she has um, heard this story. Yeah, it's a story, by the way. It's a made up story. Yeah, from God knows who. And she is so nerve wracked because nerve, it's a nerve wracking moment for her because it's the first time she can use that kind of evidence. And now she's thinking she's making some kind of point and realizing that she has no point. You can see it's, it's not emotional. She's not emotional. She's, it's a nerve wracking moment for her. Do you get it? Because she knows. She, it's, it's, what, what are you talking about? It was for that specific person. Who are you? With all due respect, who are you? Alama, who are you? Which, 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 uh, Sheikha are you? SubhanAllah, Ajibaki. The, the way she stretched the story. The, the question is, is she uh, Alusi, the famous uh, Quran uh, exegete? No, because he's of the opinion. Ibn Kathir, maybe? No. Ibn Qurtubi? Kathir, <laughs> all, all of these Alusi, Ibn Kathir, Qurtubi, and Tabari. All the Quranic Mufassirin are unanimous that homosexuality, this is referring to homosexuality, the act of homosexuality, and homosexuality is a sin. It's not referring to rape. None of the Mufassirin, uh, the major Mufassirin, say this. This is not an uh, opinion. If there was leeway here and there, there is no leeway. There is unanimity on this point that this is referring to a homosexual act, and that homosexual act is haram, it is forbidden, and then again, it's because certain people just rely on the Quran. That's why we said it's a four-pronged approach. You then go on the Hadith, the Tirmidhi Hadith, actually, I don't know how clear-cut you can make it. I yeah? think Put in yeah. your private part, in the anus of a man mm -hmm. and a woman, is not permitted. Allah doesn't even look at that person. That's the Hadith exactly. of Tirmidhi. So, so this, is, you can't, this is something you can't even do with your wife, which is permissible for you, yeah? And you can't. And by the way, you can be Muslim and gay in the context of it's a sin. You can. Someone could be an adulterer. He's a Muslim. Someone can be an, a person who's an alcoholic. Yeah. Somebody can be a murderer. Being Muslim is those acts do not take out the fold of Islam. That's not what we're talking about. And I've had many discussions with homosexuals on this matter. The point is where you're trying to make it permissible. That's bil ijma. Yes. That yes. anyone bil ijma meaning there is no difference of difference opinion. opinion. Yeah. Period. Yeah. That to say. That the act of homosexuality is not a sin. Mm. Yeah, and let's listen to it. I'll, I'll go further. There's different interpretations of the story of Prophet Lut. One interpretation is that it's about homosexuality, and there are other interpretations throughout history that says it wasn't about homosexuality, but for some reason, the interpretation that it is condemning homosexuality is the dominant narrative. And I think that narrative seriously needs to be contended with um, because we're saying that you know being homosexual, being homosexual or being bisexual or being anything other than heterosexual is a sin. But Allah creates you like that. Allah creates people who are intersex. Like intersex people exist in this world. And so I think there's a lot of different... What did she mean? Look, I don't know. Look, I'll be honest with you. Yeah? She's look, saying Allah look. created those people. So, so okay, well, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent uh, magic down via Harut and Marut. Seher. Mm -hmm. Seher, which is something that takes you at the fold of Islam. The act of homosexuality doesn't take you at the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. But involving in Seher can take you at the fold of Islam. Yeah? So now... The, um, they were sent down and the angels told them we are sent down as a test what are you going to say but Allah sent down seher mm. but Allah sent down seher but, why, why come, but Allah sent it did Allah sent it and Allah gave me the inclination that I want to do seher what kind of justification is this you can't use this justification of we are created like this that's fine I spoke to a homosexual 
is a brother who had these tendencies mm. and bro his attitude was totally different yeah. I submit to Allah this mm. is how yes I have this inclination but I will fight it yeah married couple they will be spending time you know um, with their family children I get to spend time with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone it's like, bro, wow you can see how you can view it also so there are people like that out there so all we're just saying is my dear sister I'm not trying to be harsh on you but please don't come and try to change the religion with all due respect look you want to be like that at least come and say it's haram like that sister who when it came to the hijab she said look I don't wear it but this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said at least be honest this is what annoys me if you make something that's haram halal or you make something that's halal haram that's, that, that's a problem bro there's ijma anybody that says the act of homosexuality is not a sin it's a kafir kafir I'm not, I'm not talking about her I'm talking anybody that comes and says an uh, act of homosexuality is not a sin, you are a kafir. It's as simple as that. Because you are doing istihlal. What Allah deemed to be halal, haram, like the Prophet said to one of the companions. Mm. And he was a Jew. He said, Did you not used to worship rabbis? He said, We never used to worship rabbis. He said, Did you not used to, uh, when they used to make something halal, haram, haram, haram halal? Mm. He said, Yeah. He said, That's how you made them, you, you know, that's how you made them, you, you know, a form of worship. Because mm. you're taking what they're saying, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And you're here with no qualifications. With all due respect, yeah, and you you are you are nervous or something came on you that you can't even speak properly, subhanallah, and you are there trying to make these verdicts. Oh, the, the general view needs to be questioned. No, you need to be questioned. Just because you feel like in today's time it's a norm, okay, no problem. If you have these tendencies, we're not saying to you these tendencies take you out of the fold of Islam. You can be a Muslim, but don't come and say it's not a sin because that takes you out of the fold of Islam. Yeah. Um, and when you are making points like this and you're saying an interpretation, who who who's saying this and where's this interpretation? The brothers when they spoke, they gave evidence from the Quran. Yes. You're saying, oh, there's an who who no, because no. I've just given you all the main names Tell that are referred to. Say who, bro? Yeah. Who? Where's the evidence for this? That the natural there, there there is no evidence for this. Mm. It's very weak. It's conjecture. It's no peer reviewed study that says that you are born gay. That's just it's completely yeah, false. It's debunked, yeah. And she hasn't brought anything to the table. Again, she just started getting emotional. She's queer herself, and she she's actually brought nothing of credibility. There's nothing that you can actually take from what she said. And there's nothing that's yeah. actually got me thinking. Mm, I need to look into mm, this or exactly. or that as well. Yeah. So being bro, there there are certain people that have inclinations towards animals, towards yeah, exactly. small children, towards, no, exactly. incest. towards okay. de yeah. dead bodies. No problem. Yeah. Incest. Yeah. Necrophilia. Incest. Yeah. Can you can you allow them? If they came and said to you, look, let me, look wallahi, go to this woman, this woman, and tell her that um, I have. A, if a man came and said, I have an inclination of necrophilia. I like um, having intimacy with dead people or incest. What would you say? What would you say? You say, uh, uh, you disgusting person. Why are you saying that? I thought love is love. I thought they're born like this. I thought Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them like that. They can come and make that argument. I'm created like this. I have these desires. Yeah. That's what Allah says. Have you seen the one who takes his desire as his ilah, as his God? You know what that means? We as human beings, we can go to all kinds of lengths of all kinds of stuff. Yeah? Okay. But the thing is what? It's about taming. And it's about for the sake of Allah. And Allah says, if you fear me, I will give you a way out from places you can never imagine. Do you know what that means? That guy that I spoke to in the park, yeah? And I put the video there. That, I said to him, bro, wallahi, once you put your trust in Allah, there is nothing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot get you out of. Even if you're born with certain tendencies, yeah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Subhanahu wa ta'ala can get you out and you will have the pleasure of this life. You might say, Yeah, but I can't get married. Wallahi, Allah will put you in a situation where He will get you out. But put your trust in Him, not taking your own desires as your Lord. It's like we're told to control ourselves. We, yeah, we have bro. a tendency to cross a red light. Come we on. have a tendency to, yeah. you know, um, ogle at women or whatnot. As human yeah. beings, if somebody's shaking their bits and bobs about, you're naturally going to look. Mm. But you have to avert your gaze. You yeah. can't touch. There's, yeah. there's control involved uh, in every yeah. aspect and any yeah. aspect of life. We're naturally inclined yeah. not to wait. Like our body is inclined towards rest, but we have yeah. to go to work. You can't use this argument that, oh, we we're born like this. It's not a act which is beneficial and conducive um, to the procreation of life or to, to other things as well. Exactly. And I mean, in a nutshell, that's all, I, all I'm going to say. Um, that, look, again, sister, you can be a Muslim, but don't come and say it's not a sin. Yeah? You might feel strong about it. All we're just saying is, don't c cross that line, please. Okay? We, as Muslims, as Islam, Islam accepts you with your sins. 
even if they reach the skies and no, I, w- I would okay. say to the sister that she needs to speak to somebody of knowledge and possibly yeah, yeah, say yeah, a no, shahada again. No, be 100% bro, 100%. I'm so sorry. You know, your statements are statements that yeah. take one at the fold of Islam. Yeah. Again, it's, I'm just talking generally here, yeah? Please be careful. And if you see it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroyed many nations because of shirk. The Qawmul Lut is the only generation where the shirk is not mentioned as, like, as much, yeah? yeah? And they were destroyed just for their act, yeah? There was a sahaba who said, if... I can't remember if it was Abdullah bin Masur or Abdullah bin Abbas. He said, if I, if someone didn't come and told me that people do this act, he goes, not in a million years I think this act is, exists. And that's all, like, I mean, that, that's all I want to say. Nothing else. Um, and my dear sister, please, we want the best for you. Accept it as a sin. It's a sin. No problem. We're not saying you are evil. All we're saying is accept it as a sin. Like many people commit sins and just say it's a sin. I ask Allah to help me and I'm working. That's all we're saying. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.